Got the uh, trout fishing bug, decided to make the run across the border. We were coming from the south, coming up to, uh, Highway 259, and there'll be a sign just off to the right of Highway 259 indicating the entrance to the Beaver Bend State Park. And so we'll make a right here, and we'll show some video showing us making that turn. All right, and then uh, you come along this road, and you'll see a park entrance sign right here. So it'll wind around. You'll start winding, and there'll be a park entrance sign that says uh, um, definitely Beaver Bend State Park. And then you'll start going down below uh, to uh, looks like a visitor center that'll be just off to the right in this area. Uh, what you'll do is you'll come to a four-way stop, and you'll make a left, and you'll follow this road around here, and you'll come to uh, like a recreation area, like a little bridge here and all that, and also another stop sign. You can make a left here, and that'll take you all the way over here to um, along this road to a bridge, and you'll see the Beaver's Bend Fly Shop just right here. It used to be over here, uh, and then they had the big flood. Uh, it was rebuilt, and now it's on the other side of the road. So, and a little bit farther up to uh, from from the water line. So, uh, good news there. Uh, as you come along uh, this road here, you'll come to first part of the evening hole. Uh, here's the bridge. There's a parking area, and this will be the evening hole area right here and then you have an area called the bluffs and there's another area called the cold hole and there's some changes here that we'll speak of here shortly um, but as you um, come along this road you'll come to a washout area and I'll give a warning sign indicating that there's limited turnaround uh, when you uh, approach this area uh, what you can do is you can park here uh, and from there you can walk in the rest of the way to Spillway Creek uh, as well as the cold hole Go ahead and zoom in here real quick. You can see where some folks are parked over here. All right, so this is uh, a picture of uh, back in 2015. Yes, January 23, 2015 is what the imagery date is showing for Google Earth. Um, this bridge is gone now. Uh, so what happens is there's a barricade here, and you can park along here on the other side of the barricade, and then you walk the rest of the way in. Uh, initially, Lost Creek is gone. This used to be Lost Creek. Instead, you'll just uh, work your way into this area here to where you can get to the the uh, main river itself. Some of the changes that we saw, there's no longer this little tail race piece here. There's more of a, uh, a narrow gap between the uh, uh, two sides of the river here, and it runs into the cold hole area. All right, much uh, narrower than uh, it used to be. And there's the cold hole area. This area is the red zone. And you'll see a, a sign just on this side, as well as a sign over here indicating the red zone. All right, so you've got uh, the other red zone marker just across. So this whole area is red zone, so 20-inch uh, limit for uh, rainbow trout, one a day. And then that catch and release, you got to go with the uh, barbless hooks, too. And then this area up here is going to be the blue zone, and this is Spillway Creek. And... Uh, this uh, round that we went uh, fishing, we fished along this area here. Saw a good amount of people uh, fishing as well. Ended up uh, getting one trout in this area. Lost a couple of more trout in this area as well as uh, caught, a little, caught a little bluegill. So that was fun. Fished this area about a good two hours just working our way up and down it. Uh, stayed away from the red zone since we had uh, kept that one uh, trout. Uh, and it was well under the 20 inch uh, requirement for the red zone uh, so we ended up uh, deciding to do some exploring we wanted to go check out the other side of the uh, river as well as uh, the tail race area uh, hadn't been there before so uh, we decided to go and uh, take a look all right we uh, got one on looks like a little guy probably one of those uh, wild native ones or uh, yeah here we go i think these are what they call the wild ones since they're so small pretty cool we ended up uh, closing up that round in the morning and working our way back along the road where we came from and over here by the powerhouse. There's a powerhouse. I ended up actually taking a look over here to, to see what was there and we saw some folks fishing. Didn't uh, really see anyone catching anything but uh, we did see some folks fishing in this area. We checked that out briefly and then we went ahead and uh, looked for that tail race area. And so we ended up coming up here, going to the overlook and then we turned down here and came to this parking area here and walked in again just briefly we we saw that we were just north of where we were from the other side of the river and decided to just 
take a quick look over here just to see what that side of the river looked like and um, didn't get anything that uh, that round as well uh, so we went back to the parking area you came back up around and followed this road all the way up to the tail race area and we stopped short of the dam and parked over here at this parking area and we'll go ahead and zoom in give you an idea of what uh, we were doing so we parked here and we had uh, a little trail that we went down to this spot all right that's where we came from and we still got a little bit more to go all right here we are all right so we ended up river uh, heading toward the uh, tail race ended up getting or losing some trout in this little portion of the river all right we're getting uh, hits over here in this one run just down from the uh, dam along the spillway had a couple of hits and then uh, had one come off. Initially, we saw some other folks catching some trout. On bottom line, it was uh, a good opportunity to get some trout. I did see that you can also park on this side of the rivers if you didn't want to climb down. You could have came back around and parked here. Also worked our way down these little runs, and that's where we ended up getting most of our hits was uh, in between these pockets along these runs. We did lose one over here in this uh, deeper pool or deeper, deeper channel. Uh, and the rest of the time, just working our way down here, we were looking for spots that... Um, I looked a little bit deeper uh, that had some flowing water and that's where we ended up uh, catching our second trout that day as well as uh, losing a, another trout. All we're doing is casting upstream and letting it uh, bounce on the bottom and as soon as we see some kind of movement we're setting the hook and we can see where there's some deeper areas and pockets and it's kind of where we're concentrating our efforts. Finally got this guy. Woohoo! Number two. Then we worked our way down here. There's area over here was fairly busy There's a good amount of people over there playing in the water as well as fishing uh, we did work our way down all the way about spot three there was an area that was a deeper area we kind of worked our way over here along these um, or, um uh, fast moving water but uh, didn't get any hits there i uh, did work one spot where another individual um, a couple was uh, was fishing and they were doing well uh, catching a few trout uh, along one of these uh, deeper pool areas um, we tried it. Uh, we saw several uh, trout rising to the surface. One even taking uh, an egg pattern that we were trying, um, but unfortunately we didn't uh, able to, to land them. Uh, pretty interesting is uh, on this stretch, I'm the only one here right now. So, pretty cool. Came back to the parking area. Instead of going down this little trail though, we ended up taking a, a little bit more open area to get up there. Uh, and then uh, from there, the, called it a trip and head across the dam this time uh, took a quick look at uh, what was down here um, as we crossed kind of slowed down a little bit and uh, checked out things there's an overlook here and then uh, we made our way back uh, home leaving the park area using a north entrance uh, or more northern entrance uh, to the area back to highway 259 so right along this area Highway 259 headed back down uh, in the direction of uh, Broken Bow, Oklahoma. All right, uh, that's all we had this round. Hopefully uh, this can help uh, some folks when they decide to uh, take a trip to Beaver Bend State Park and fish the Lower Mo Mountain uh, Fork River.